We're all gonna die. Yep. Hello everyone, I am Bolt Matrix, and today we are taking a look at Transformers Studio Series number 101, Leader Class, Rise of the Beasts, Scourge, or Scourge, however you prefer to pronounce it. I picked this figure up over at Amazon.com, and it is available at Big Bad Toy Store and any of your other favorite e-retailers for, you know, giant robots and stuff. This figure is a biggie boy, which I do greatly appreciate. In terms of size, here are... His granddaddy, Leader Class The Fallen, Legacy Leader Class Skyquake, Leader Class Legacy Beast Wars Transmetal 2 Megatron, Leader Class Legacy Laser Prime, Leader Class Galvatron, and Barney the Murderous Dinosaur. I think Scourge cuts a very, very good silhouette in this Leader Class mold. There's a lot to like here. The only complaint I have is the monochromatic color scheme. Yes, there are some breakup points in with the paint and and specifically the chains that are around different parts of its limbs. But overall, the aesthetic of the figure is quite good, especially that head sculpt. I absolutely adore this head sculpt. It's got the Unicron faction symbol, or it is the Unicron faction symbol. And that's not a spoiler, because good lord, Unicron's in the frickin' trailer that dropped a couple of days ago. A couple of days ago being from when I actually shot this review. I can't argue with the overall look, because it's what Megatron from Dark of the Moon should have been, or at least, in my mind, what he should have been. Not, you know, giant robot hobo. Even from the back, it works well. You can tell it's supposed to transform into a truck. I mean, that's pretty much obvious, but the backpack is very svelte. It's not super kibbly, and it works. What I don't think works is the gun that's stored on his butt. I just don't like the gun being stored on his butt. That's just a me thing. Now, how do you mount the gun? Well, you come over to his octopus hand, which opens and closes and doesn't spin. I really would have loved some more jointing happening here, but that works. Grab the entire forearm and pull it off at the elbow. So just put that off to the side and then attach said blaster. Now there is a little bit of plastic keying going on here. You can see that slot and that goes onto that peg and then it slides into place and you've got blaster arm for, you know, shooting fools. The other gimmick in robot mode is this giant double-bladed sword, aka a botleth, which folds up into the forearm. You flip out the lower blade, fold it up, and it will fold up and snap into the figure's palm. And then you could close the fingers around, and you've got the biggest butter knife known to man. Okay, it's not a butter knife. It's supposed to be a very pointy, deadly sword. And, ah, it does work. And it looks good, but man, it really doesn't fold up that well on the back of the forearm, and it just gets in the way of a lot of posing, unless you're, you know, holding the dang thing. And pose this figure can. It's got ball joints and hinges and a lot of juicy, juicy posability. The only issue I have with the posability are the ankles are a little bit too far forward in where they connect to the shins, and that does make the figure a bit top-heavy, and he does have a tendency to fall backwards. Just be aware of that. As you have seen, Scourge's posability is pretty darn good. Yes, the figure has a little bit of top heaviness issues, thanks to the, well, kind of lack of heels, but it's more of the, just the overall engineering design. So, posability-wise for the figure as a whole, head is double ball jointed. There is a ball joint right in the neck there, and I'm trying to get my light in so you can see, you can see it right there. Now, be wary if you pick up this figure, that ball joint does have a tendency to come undone pretty easily so he can look down pretty much pretty far can't look back that far but his head is on another ball joint all its own and it can look up pretty darn far and as you saw in the opening of this video it's got light piping lots of light piping arms are pretty cool there is a swivel for forward and back then a hinge for in and out underneath the shoulder then the shoulder itself moves up and down and it has another joint inside the shoulder for up and down that inside joint is primarily for the transformation but you can get some cool poses and well scourge is the single best dabber that i've gotten a hold of in a while and while i was dabbing i knocked the head off <laughs> oh 
uh, it goes on pretty easily. I'm kind of hoping that we get a redesigned head at some point, maybe from non-NEF or DNA designs. That'd be nice. Both arms have a swivel just above the elbow. Elbow bends at 90 degrees. There is no wrist articulation on either of the forearms, unfortunately. The left arm is the octopus tentacle arm, which I actually really like. I just wish it had some more joints in it, but at this size, or I should say at the thinness that they're going for, I can understand why it doesn't. The other arm has the bot lith, which has one, two, three different joints on it, and then you kind of count a fourth one if you want to you know, the fold-out if you want to count that one. And then the hand does open and close at the outer fingers. The thumb does not move at all. Let me know down in the comments if A, you have this figure, and B, have figured out a better way to store this gigantic butter knife. Torso articulation is present and can only move, nah, not even 180. I'd say maybe 90 degrees, 85, 90 degrees, but it's plenty. You don't really need any more. Legs are on swivels for forward and back, and then a hand for in and out. There is a thigh swivel. Knee bend is existing and oh, that does not sound good and it's the same on both sides. Now what's causing that terrible noise is the fact that these joints are rubber pinned. There are little rubber pins. Then we come down to the ankles, which are my pet peeve of, with this figure, because the ankle itself, it, even though it looks like it's up and down, it's actually forward a bit. So the figure's foot can kick forward, but can't kick back terribly far. It does kick back though. And there is art, well, there is articulation inwards, but not outwards for the ankle rocker. So the possibility is a little tiny bit limited. Not that much, though. What is a problem, though, is the fact that the foot isn't in a straight line with the rest of the body. So he just has a tendency to fall forward unless you jam the knees straight and then kind of tweak him a little bit so that he's you know, bending forward just a smidge, it's not the biggest deal in the world. It's just something I keep having to remind myself whenever I pick up the figure, because whenever I put him down, he falls flat on his back. Before we move on to the transformation, here's how Grumpy McFire Guts looks with the other Terracons that I have, Freezer and Battle Trap. So we're, we've got a core class, we'll have a deluxe class, a Voyager, and a leader class. I'm really hoping, as you saw in the beginning of the video, the figure looks like he's got some real heartburn there in the chest. And that chest is probably my favorite aspect of the figure in both robot and vehicle mode. You can see on the chest that it is the grill of the vehicle mode, and it just looks absolutely badass. I mean, it's just the the overall aesthetic of it, it works really well. Now, the other thing that's really cool, and it's very hard to see, but on the grill, not the grill, the, I guess the radiator that is inside the chest, there are faction symbols for all the different bots he's murdered which I appreciate. All right, it's transformation time. Now, one word of warning, this transformation isn't horrible, but the directions don't make it any fun. The directions are actually wrong in a couple of spots. To start the transformation, turn the figure around, grab the entire backpack and pull it away from the body pulling it down, and there is a series of hinges. You can see them right there. We're just going to straighten it completely flat out like that. Then reach inside the backpack and flip out what will become the front of the vehicle mode, all the way out like that. Come to the bottom of the feet, and on the figure's left foot is this peg. And you want to flip that peg out any way you can. Um, I end up having to use a nail, or my finger, or anything that's sharp and pokey. Uh, ah, come on, Primal Sword. Help me. Uh, ah, dang it. Once the little peg is, well, flipped out, take a leg, turn it 180 degrees, and then plug it into the little peg stump that's in the crotch. So again, flip the leg around, and there is a peg hole, or peg slot, right there. And that gets pegged in like that. Then come down to the wheels, and the bottom wheels are pushed in, and you just want to pull them out so they line up with the other wheel. 
This isn't 100% necessary, but it does make the final truck mode look a little better. Now take the toes and fold the toes in so that they're pointing inwards like that. Then fold the toes up into the back or the inside of the foot or the leg and then peg them into place on both sides and then smoosh the feet together. Now come to the upper body and take the head and just point it forward then grab the shoulder, flip it up, and then there's that other hinge that's underneath the shoulder. Flip it down until it's pointing forward like that. And do that on both sides and extend the knife all the way out. So you want to kind of scrunch up the shoulders and then point the arms down. And then fold the right shoulder in behind the head like that and then you can drop the knife into the back of the vehicle mode, kind of like that. And you want to do that for both sides. So do that on both sides. And then there, and there is a little peg on the back, or peg hole on the back that accepts the shoulders. And like so. And then just straighten out the knives. And I goofed, you're not supposed to peg the, sh the feet in together until you get the knife all the way down, and there is a slot on the inside that that knife will peg into. And now you combine the toesies, like that. Now that we've got this, now that we're at this point, grab the chest, pull it away from the figure, and turn it so that the bottom of the abdomen section is up towards the head. Grab that abdomen section and flip it forward until it snaps into place. Then grab the whole thing, fold it out, and flip it around, and it will then form the front grill of the vehicle mode. And this part takes a little bit of futzing because some things don't always line up right away, but you just have to fiddle with it until you can figure out how to get it to peg into place. So what you have to do with this hinge is actually kind of counterintuitive. You actually collapse the hinges onto each other like that and create a little hinge sandwich. And then that will give you the amount of clearance you need to push it in and get everything back into place correctly. So then we can fold the doors down and then the doors look like they are pegged in correctly and voila, the truck looks like it's supposed to. I love this truck mode. It looks so badass. It just works for me really, really well, except the bed is a little long for the truck. It should be a little bit shorter in there. Obviously, shouldn't be a, I don't know, a robot hand and a Cthulhu-esque horror coming out of the back of the cab, but I, it's a toy. I can forgive it. it works well. It's got incredibly good detail. That grill that we were talking about earlier with the faction symbols of the fallen of its victims works really well here. The overall Mad Max aesthetic is incredibly good. And from the very first set pictures, I was like, okay, that truck is nasty. In a good way. In a 100% in good way. Now, the other thing that we haven't done is attach the cannon. And that is this guy. So this splits apart. It's actually kind of hard to split apart if you don't have nails. And then flip it out and turn it. And then flip that around and turn it so that they are pointing out like that. And then these sections will peg in. Oops, I actually have that backwards. We want the peg holes pointing inwards. And then that pegs onto the back like that. So yeah, that's it. That's the truck mode. It looks really good, and it's got some detailing that I absolutely love. There we go. That that looks terrible. That looks just absolutely stupid. Freezer, my boy, you continue to disappoint. Let's do some comparisons. Leader Laser Prime, Holiday Prime, ROTB Voyager Prime, Earthrise Prime, Space Skateboard, Barney. Returning the figure to robot mode isn't hard. It's just reversing the transformation, but there is something you should be aware of. These doors are clear plastic, and so is the top and part of the front of the vehicle mode. In order to prevent things from breaking, I strongly suggest when you when you go to 
remove the windows. Stick your finger up there and just push on the hinge from the inside. Don't just grab the sides and pull. That's going to break it. Just push your finger up inside in order to get it to move. And there's going to be a lot less potential for breakage if you do it that way. Also, the front grill has a tendency to pop off. It is soft rubber, so just be aware of that. And then grab that, move it in, down, and then unpeg the wheel. Flip that around. Flippy, flippy. And do the same thing for the other wheel. Ah, the wheels peg in very tightly. Flip that down. Unpeg the shoulder bits. And the head falls off. Yeah, that's something I do want to talk about. The the head on my figure has been falling off a lot lately. I mean, a lot. I go to handle it, I go to pose it. This ball joint pops out way too easily for my taste. Now that you've got the front unpegged, flip out the entire backpack like that. Unpeg the rear of the vehicle mode. Unpeg the batleth. Flip that around. Then come to the other side and turn around and flip around the chest so that that can then be pegged into place. And we can get the other arm, flip that around, peg it into place, get the arms done, peg that, push down the belly, come to the legs, unpeg the legs, fold up that, flip down the toes, and flip them out, turn the leggies around, stand the figure up, grab the shoulders, pull them down, come to the backpack, flip the very front in to the cavity, grab the, well, the doors, and flip them in. You really should flip them in before you flip down the nose cone or the nose. And then fold that whole thing up and peg it into place. And we are done. Overall, Leader Class Scourge is a very cool figure and definitely worth picking up, especially if you're a fan of the ROTB. Now, this is my third Terracon, and it's the best of all of them so far. Battle Trap is... Uh, it's okay, but it's not great. And then, well, Freezer's an utter disaster, and he just punched out his boss. No biscuits. So that has been my video review of Transformers Studio Series Leader Class Rise of the Beasts Scourge. Let me know what you think of this figure down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. I have been Bolt Matrix, and I hope you all have a wonderful day.